All right, guys, now I keep recording these small little clips as I'm kind of doing the experiment just to kind of record this as we go. I don't know how much is actually going to end up on a finished product for you guys, but what I'm doing today is I want to find out the importance of top balancing. Uh, if you guys are looking into the research or you're finding this video because you want to put together a lithium ion pack for your van, your bus, your schoolie, whatever, boat, yacht, doesn't matter. If you want to try to put this together, um, you're going to hear everyone tout that bottom balancing and or top balancing is absolutely necessary. I will tell you on my journey to this far, um, I did purchase a NOCO charger. Um, I actually picked up their, it's their Gen Pro 10X2. It's a 10 amp per channel charger. It has a lithium profile so the lithium batteries can get charged. However, I discovered it really it didn't charge it past 13 point whatever uh, I kept turning green saying that the battery pack was charged it was shut down charging way before the BMS even turned it off and I didn't really like that um, I did talk to NOCO they did agree that that charger probably isn't working correctly however I decided to go with a Victron product uh, it is their three output I was really hoping like the NOCO how each channel could be set separate profiles for each one. So the two channel NOCO I absolutely loved. Again, Gen Pro 10X2 because I could hook up a AGM profile for the truck batteries and then I could run a lithium profile. So when I put in one plug into the bus, I know that the house batteries and the truck batteries are topped off with the appropriate charging profile for each one. However, Victron doesn't really work that way. This is a three output and every output is whatever you set it to. If it's a lithium profile, all three outputs are going to be the same. Um, unfortunately, even the, the beautiful app that they, they use on Victron, uh, the Bluetooth, all the stuff that makes it so user-friendly, you just can't bring each profile to a different output, which is I, I think is a downfall. Fall. Um, this is not the waterproof version. Waterproof version of Victron only goes up to 15 amps. This is a 30 amp, which I'm really enjoying the higher output. Um, even with the NOCO, I ran both uh, 10 amps on the same charge, so I could get 20 amps out of it. Long story short, I've tried different versions of this. Um, what was recommended me to uh, sort of a good friend, a local battery expert here, is to charge them up as best can be, run them, discharge them, charge them up again, then put all these back into parallel. So if you watched a few of my videos, I had set all the batteries into parallel just using some copper wire so everything was balanced around the same voltage. And we're gonna do that a little bit and to find out whether or not top balancing is absolutely necessary. So I will let you know, I've got the BMS right now. The BMS is shut down. If you guys can see that here, maybe I'll try to put a screenshot. But cell number two is at 355. Now I do have the BMS set to a very comfortable profile. I don't want my batteries to go all the way to 365 and I don't want to bring them down to 25. So I've got 27 as my lower limit and my ceiling is 355. Um, and then it will reinitiate at, you know, 35 something, 350. Uh, it's a very comfortable parameters. I don't need to use all of this. Um, I will let you know that I did kind of an initial break-in test of the first pack the other day and it was not charged all the way. It was only 13 something, 13.5 or 13.7 and I decided to discharge it. So I hooked up the inverter and I'll put in a quick clip but I had my shop back running which is about 1100 watts. It was pulling 80 amps out of this thing and until I started screwing around with it and accidentally reset everything, I was almost at three hours running this shop back. This one pack is going to be way more power than I ever need, and I have two of them. So we will see down the road. I may just uh, put one together and uh, see if there's any interest in uh, you know selling these. If you guys don't want to try to put this together yourself, um, or wait for the shipping from China. So 280 amp is going to be plenty. It looks like um, I can't imagine ever needing to run anything at you know 1100 amps, you know, for an hour. I could run an Instapot you know, for several hours, and then even on low, it doesn't require that much wattage. So, this quick little shot is me just running the shot back. Um, maybe I'll just overset it here because you can't really hear what I'm talking about anyway. Um, but I was very impressed, basically, as the initial impressions of what this battery can do. So, this is the second uh, setup, second battery pack. And as today, it is uh, turning off at 13.6 volt voltage, and that is merely because battery two um, they were the BMS was not able to keep it balanced enough 
that that one did not take more charge quicker. So it shut everything down. So let's discharge it and just see what that looks like today. Um, now what I'm going to do is uh, the Renogy 2000 watt inverter is a pure sign inverter. Uh, I do have a household heater, uh, 1800 watt heater I believe it is. And that's merely so that you can, put, you can hear me. Uh, if I hook up the shop back, you can't really get much audio while we do this. And let's just see what happens. So we're gonna flip on the inverter and put it on low. You're gonna see this heater here. Let's see if we can actually get this on camera. So here's the heater starting up. We're at 16 amps. 17 amps you can see as we discharge it is going to start balancing we're up to 60 amps again i think it's an 1800 watt uh heater 98 amps and it will eventually will kick down but you have the heater starting up the heater coils again it's an electric heater all right guys just for giggles i turn on the heater on high uh, wanted to see if it was too much for the uh, the BMS, uh, which is set to 120 amps. Uh, it did spike to 130 and did not shut off, uh, which is a good sign. Uh, we're not getting much balancing at the moment, uh, which is a little disconcerting, so we're going to see what happens there. But we're pulling 109 amps. Um, there was a little bit of balancing. I don't know why the balancing is not active right now. Seems like a good time to do that. Uh, this again has not been zeroed for state of charge, but we're still pulling just under 1400 watts, 110 amps, and I will tell you, I've done this once before, and everything stays nice and cool. None of the terminals get hot, I'm not worried about it, but it is one reason why I do have two BMS instead of trying to run an eight cell pack on one BMS. Um, just for safety and for ease, um, I want to make sure that nothing is overheated. So there is one BMS for each four cells. Uh, so I have no qualms with uh, running this thing at full goat and uh, not worrying about anything shorting out or heating up uh, past the parameters. But. All right, guys, I realize some of this stuff is not going to be interesting to a lot of you guys. Um, this is a little bit geeking out on how this all operates. Um, but wanted to talk about overkill solar and the BMS and everything I've tested it to do. Um, we'll do a separate video on it, but I have no qualms recommending it right now. From the low temperature cutoff, the, the temperature unit works, uh, the software works well, the over surge protection. I ran the shop vac and the heater the other day and everything turned off the way it needed to. Now you may have seen that the heater here on high did surge up to 130 and it did not turn off. It took that power for a little bit and then once the heater kicked back down, it, the BMS did not have to shut anything down. So all of this, all this geekiness, all the, all the fun electronic, seeing what happens um, is what I've been testing. And so I'm not sure how this is all gonna work out into a video, but let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, this is kind of what we're working on, whether or not top balancing is necessary um, I still have a power supply ordered. I will run these in a charge and a discharge state several times and then like the other pack I have over there, I've then disconnected it, put it back into parallel, ran the um, copper over them and I'm rebalancing them. Um, but in the end, I will probably put a power supply on them. Uh, it's just to see if I can get the full, full power out of these cells, which is still incredible. Right now I'm still pulling 1362 watts the BMS is telling me although it's self-adjusting it's going to be a couple hours um, I realized that the uh, the Victron was not showing full state of charge so it didn't know the percentage or how much time it would have left so I need to kind of work on that and get that programmed in there so we can actually do a proper capacity test if you will but like I kind of mentioned quickly before I ran the shop back at 1100 watts for three hours, it did not run out of power and it wasn't even fully charged. I think it was around that 13.7 volts. So, man, it's a lot of power. Um, I don't ever really need, on top of the fact that we're about to put on solar, um, we've got an upgraded alternator going in this thing and I have not spent nearly as much money as a lot of these guys that you're watching on YouTube that are buying these over-the-counter ones. Now I realize there's lots of great companies out there that are feeding these guys uh, free batteries uh, for you to watch. I'm not 
against that at all. I realize the whole idea of promotion and products, and in fact, most of the reviews you guys see on this channel have been products that people have sent me. Um, I get it. But for me and everyone else out there, you know, there's a difference between buying a $60 knife or a stove that I do a review on and spending $6,000 on Battleborn batteries to get 600 amp hours of power. That's just so much. This right here is just shy of 600 amp hours. You know, it's going to be what, uh, 560, 280 times two. And there's just so much power, guys. It's ridiculous amount of, amount of power. Um, I'll be curious to see, I'm still actually kind of tempted to run an electric water heater now because I know what these cells can do. Um, but I'm going to kind of wait to see how much, um, the, the solar panels that we're putting on are going to be able to keep these topped up, um, depending on how much demand that I put on them. So see what kind of power we're getting coming into the system and that we're putting out. It's just kind of a quick little update on kind of what we're up to. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Let me know if you want to see anything specific. If you guys are looking into these cells, you want to build them yourself. Um, as I think I mentioned at the beginning of this video or a previous video, um, I don't even know if I'm going to run both of these. I think it's just so much power. So I may look at uh, turn around and selling these. Um, and we may do this more down the road now that I've got a little bit more equipment, a little more experience in it. And uh, I'm just super impressed with what, what, what you can do uh, in the sort of do DIY space um, and setting yourself up for saving over five grand, um, depending on what you want to do. So let me know what you guys think. I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the adventure on social media, and we'll see you on the road.